19th century Soho in London was a far cry from what it is today. A colourful, cosmopolitan, beating heart of town, bustling with restaurants, cafes, shoe shopping, some major West End theatres and a great many pubs offering very fine ales. One of these pubs carries the name of a man who made history on the very spot where it stands, the English physician John Snow. Because in 1854, Soho, then one of the poorest districts in London, suffered a devastating cholera outbreak, claiming the lives of 616 people. The general school of thought at the time was that cholera was an airborne disease, and so any attempts at containing it hinged on that perception. But it was not a view that John Snow shared. He surmised that contaminated water carried the bacteria responsible for cholera, and in order to test his theory, he investigated the locations where cases had occurred. In a series of now celebrated and since then often reproduced maps, he plotted the incidents of deaths and found that they clustered around one particular well on the corner of Broad Street, today's Broadwick Street, and Cambridge Street, which no longer exists. It is the location of today's John Snow pub. Equipped with this data, John Snow convinced the authorities to remove the handle of said well and the death toll promptly declined. It turned out the well had indeed been polluted by waste seeping into it from a nearby cesspit. Snow himself treated his evidence with considerable caution and admitted that the outbreak had actually already started to abate before action was taken. Nevertheless, John Snow today is credited not only with linking cholera to drinking water contamination, but also, and for us an architect of particular interest, with the systematic association of data with geographical locations and their effective analysis the approach that lies at the heart of Geographic Information Systems, GIS or GIS. Today, the health sector is just one of several in which GIS plays an increasingly important, so as not to say indispensable, role. Urban planning, gaming, environmental and social management, even the development and deployment of UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles or drones, as we simply would say, are all tied in with geographic data, as are app-based rideshare and taxi services such as Uber and Ola, or indeed location-based dating and hookup apps. Many of our great and small real-world challenges can be identified, analysed, visualised and therefore addressed by using digital models. As far back as 1998, in a talk titled The Digital Earth, Understanding Our Planet in the 21st Century, the then Vice President of the United States, Al Gore, declared, I believe we need a digital Earth, a multi-resolution, three-dimensional representation of the planet into which we can embed vast quantities of geo-referenced data. The point of doing so has not changed all that much since John Snow. If you have data about what happens on Earth and where, you can deal with it in a targeted, informed, specific and therefore, so the hope and fair chance, effective way. Now, while John Snow had to obtain his information by going around the infected and, as it turned out, highly contagious location in person to manually plot data points on paper, we can draw on an array of data sources from official statistics, land registry entries and routine surveys to installed urban and environmental sensors measuring traffic, air pollution or footfall, for example, right through to global satellite navigation systems and volunteered data that comes from individuals who allow their mobile devices and apps to feed information about their movements or behaviours into a system of statistical observation, which is then known as VGI, Volunteered Geographic Information. And in this unit of our MOOC, we will be looking at the methods and applications of GIS and its relevance to planning and architecture and also examine where it stands in relation to other software approaches such as CAD and BIM 
for example.